So I'm really quite excited today because we've had a paper published about our research. To understand the paper, you need to appreciate that I'm a very bad chemist in making molecules. My skills in the lab in preparing things have always been poor. So I've always been fascinated by machines in which you pump in the chemicals that are going to react and out comes product. These days, my group uses a reactor, which is just a piece of metal tube, which, if you look through it, is empty, and we fill it with a catalyst, which turns reactants into products. So the actual reactor looks like this, with tubes to pump things in and one to pump them out. We pump our reactants in with high-pressure carbon dioxide, so-called supercritical fluid, removes the need to have other solvents. You can see there's some kit behind me here, which I use for demonstrating supercritical fluids to visitors to my office. Now, the problem with reactors like this is that there are all sorts of different reaction conditions that you have to alter to get the best result. You have to change the temperature so you get the best temperature. You have to alter the flow rates of the chemicals through it. And in the case of carbon dioxide, you can vary the pressure. And this is quite a slow process. It takes a long time. And to be honest, it's really boring, or can be. Changing the temperature just a tiny bit, looking at the results, changing it again, and so on. Now, we've made it easier some time ago by putting a machine on the um, outflow of the reactor, which analyzes the products automatically, a gas chromatograph, which will tell you how much of the different products you've got. So this brings me to our new paper. You can see it's here. It was published online today. So you can see it already it still says these are not the final page numbers. So it's really hot. It's called Self-Optimizing Continuous Reactions in Supercritical Carbon Dioxide. The point about this experiment, the, the thing that's really important, is the first word of the title, self-optimizing. So what we've done is to use the signals from the gas chromatograph to adjust the conditions of the reaction. So you begin by telling the reactor which product you want. You give it a few starting conditions so it knows approximately the right temperatures and pressures. And then you let it get on with it. It analyzes the first four different sets of conditions. And then the computer attached to the machine calculates what it thinks is a better condition. And it goes on gradually improving things till it gets the highest possible yield of the product. And you don't need to do anything. You can be lying in bed, and the machine is working away. And the thing that's exciting is that it takes away all the boring bits and lets you think about the science. But let's go to the lab and have a look so you can see it for yourself. This is one of my other students, Ryan, who's now using the machine to go on to do other reactions beyond what we've already published, because it takes quite a long time between writing the paper and getting it published. In this reaction, and the one we used to prove the idea, we're reacting an alcohol, not ethanol, but pentanol that has five carbon atoms with a molecule called dimethyl carbonate, which makes an ether. The mixture of the two starting materials, pentanol and DMC, are in this bottle here. And they're a bit going through this pipe and into a pump, and the pump pumps the reaction solution into the reactor. And at the same time, we have a second pump that pumps in the carbon dioxide. The cylinder that holds the carbon dioxide is in the cupboard behind me. The reactants and the carbon dioxide are mixed here. One comes in this side, one that side, and this measures the temperature. Here, there is so-called preheater, which warms things up. And then it goes through the reactor, which is exactly like the one in my office, but it has a metal block around it to heat it up. Then the product comes out of this pipe up to here. This is a valve 
which takes small samples into this machine that analyzes it, the gas chromatograph. And the rest of the flow, which we haven't analyzed, continues on into this valve that releases the pressure and the product goes into the bottle here. The important thing is really the signals that go to the computer, then over there to where the results are analyzed. Now we calculated in the paper that in the old way we used to do it, where we change the temperature and look at that effect and then raise the pressure a bit, change the temperature and so on, the experiment that we published would have taken 84 days to do it. Under computer control, it only took 36 hours. So it's a huge saving in time. So some people might question, is this really chemistry? I think it definitely is. It's on the borders of chemistry and chemical engineering. But if you're interested, like I am, in greener ways of making chemicals, you can't just make tiny amounts in the lab. You have to be able to do it on a larger scale, eventually to build whole factories to do this. So I'm very excited because I believe this is the way of doing chemistry far more cleanly than many of the chemical reactions are done now. So here you can see how the computer is changing the conditions and homing in round here in the best possible yield for that particular product. So like all bits of science done now, it's not the professor who does the experiments, but there's a whole team and everybody makes their contribution, which is why there's so many authors on the paper. And apart from that, there are acknowledgements on the paper to those that have helped us, particularly in this case, the technicians who made some of the reactors and the other things that we use. So we're really proud, the whole team,